Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Back to School 2021 Pair Fair. I'm Erica Aguirre, and I'm going to be presenting to you the Social Media Inspired Classroom, How to Be the Influencer of Your Class. Like I said, I'm Erica Aguirre. I am a Southern California Filipino-American secondary history teacher. Um, it is my 14th year teaching, and I'm just so glad to be here. Uh, you can find me and follow me on my social media accounts um, on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. And if you have any questions, feel free to reach out and email me. And so with that, let's get started. I do want to give you a disclaimer. Um, students do not need a social media account on any platform. Teachers do not need a social media account on any platform, but it is highly encouraged. And students and teachers do not need to follow one another on any social media platform, despite the title of this session. Um, this is the social media inspired classroom. And so I know that sometimes we have uh, regulations and personal rules of our own that we don't interact with students on social media. But we're going to see how we can use social media styles and different ways to engage followers to engage our students. And so what do I mean by social media and why use it in the classroom? Social media is anything that's digital technology and allows us to participate, collaborate, to have interactivity with one another, with a post, to communicate a message. It builds community and we share things, we share our thoughts, we share events. Uh, we can network using social media. It shows our creativity, we distribute what we produce creatively. It gives us some flexibility and customization and personalization. And so if we take a look at these characteristics that make up what social media is, we can see that it's distributed or it is shown through ways like Snapchat videos, which are just 30 second clips. And so we can see how much effort it takes to actually put in to a Snapchat clip. Same with TikTok, 30 second clips. But if you take a look at some of these TikTok videos, they're actually quite a production. Twitter. When for Twitter first came out, we, we had 34 characters, then they upped it to 140, and now it's uh, 280. So we use a limited amount of characters to convey a message across all of the net. Pinterest is also considered a social media outlet where we curate different things and curate different topics, curate different recipes curate different lesson plans, and we can also use it to collaborate. Facebook is probably one of the original social media platforms that we might consider using in our classroom. And this kind of does it all. We have video, we have image, we have messages or um, text to present to our audience. And we can also curate and collaborate with Facebook. My favorite happens to be Instagram. It's very visual. You can also do images and videos on Instagram. When you're curating your Instagram feed on what your personal profile is going to be about. And so if we take a look at all of these platforms, we take a look at what social media really is, we can consider it 21st century skills because it involves critical thinking. We're using what we know and using it to present a message. Um, and sometimes that message has to be done in a short amount of time or in a limited amount of characters. We're communicating that message across mediums. We can use it to collaborate. And we certainly are showing our creativity through social media. And so the inspiration behind me using social media in my classroom actually came from Instagram stories. And Instagram stories pretty much made me a better teacher. 
And that's because of engagement. For Instagram, engagement is a metric used to determine what shows up on followers' feeds, on that main screen. Like when followers consistently like or comment or share posts, it shows that it's a sign that they are engaged with your content, that they want more of it. And so as a teacher, I definitely want that. I want my students to like my lessons. I like want them to like being in my class. I want them to like my content. And so I needed to find a way to keep them engaged. So because followers engage with the content, then the posts or the content will show up on their feed more often. And so Instagram stories are used to interact with followers. And so I use the Instagram story style to start conversations, to interact with my students and to promote social emotional learning. So not everything has to be connected or directed towards our content area or to our subject matter. And so Instagram stories has these templates, pre-made templates, where they take a poll, you can make a selection, a multiple choice selection or quiz, or even type out a text. And again, with limited amount of characters. And so I took these different templates and I used them, used them in my classroom or I applied them in my classroom. And you can do that using slides. You can do that in a variety of ways uh, using PowerPoint. You can even just throw up a question on the board. Um, but what also engages the students is actually making it look like the social media template. And so this here you see is on a slide. And I just took the question directly from the template, would you rather live without music or without TV? And you can see I even made it a Pear Deck template using the drag the icon feature. And so students would drag the check mark to their selection, whether if they would rather live without music or if they would live without TV. And I used emojis on the question template just like how I would on the Instagram one. The question template, here is a quiz. What did Mizikiri name her dog? Marty McFly, Loki, Dr. Indy, Indiana, Indy Jones, Sergeant James Buchanan, Bucky Barnes. And here I use the Pareto template again for choosing an option. And so that would appear on the student screen. And if you're familiar with my dog, Indy, um, you know that it is answer C. How do you make, take your coffee? So this image is kind of a stock image I found um, on Instagram where somebody photographed different types of coffee. And I thought, well, that's kind of a good uh, conversation starter in a classroom as well. Maybe not coffee, depending on the age range of your students, but something else. I've seen vet, uh, vending machine choices. I've seen ice cream flavors. I've seen ice cream sundaes. And so I just did a quick search on Google um, for images like this to use. So how do you take your coffee? Example, Ms. Aguirre likes her coffee strong but creamy. Her response based on the graphic would be F2. And some of you might shudder at that, I know. And so for students, they would write their response or they could even use a number. Um, they could circle using the Pear Deck template. So this was interesting to me uh, because it, it gave me something to think about, which meant that it would probably give my students something to think about too. Like this or like this, figure one or figure two. Um, so I took this idea that I saw on the internet or on social media, and I created a doodle challenge with some clip art. Draw a necktie on this giraffe, and I would give them a time limit using Pear Deck so they would decide to draw the necktie on the giraffe and they'd have a minute to do that. And then I would actually use this as a conversation starter in class or as a do now so that we can get started um, with our class. And I would be interested to know where they would draw the necktie. And I wouldn't give them the previous image as 
an example because they would just use it. So I want to know where they would genuinely draw the necktie. Personally, I would draw it down towards the body. Now this one, this one came from a website called Two Kinds of People, and it's a Tumblr. And so a graphic designer used these images um, to say that there are two kinds of people in this world. And it's a number one or a number two, which are you. And so I took this person's images and I made a, I created a graphic around them so that I could use them in my class. Um, I actually created 40 different types of graphics to use with my students, which are available in the resources section of this website for free for you to use. So you've got 40 different templates for you to use on your own. Public service announcements to teach mini lessons. So um, lately what I've been coming across on not just Instagram, but also all social media platforms is using it as public service announcements, give, using it to give information or to teach people. And so that's another way we can use social media or for example, TikTok. Um, earlier this year during Asian American Pacific Islander Heritage Month, some Instagram teachers and I uh, messaged each other to put together a TikTok video on children's books written and about various Asian American Pacific Islander uh, backgrounds and stories. On Instagram, um, a popular account is So You Want to Talk About, and they post quite frequently. And so here they have a post on So You Want to Under or So You Want to Talk About Understanding Empathy. And so they made a Instagram thread of about ten different posts to share what empathy is, and so. You want to think about how you're formatting your own lessons or presentations for your students because then that way um, it again engages them. So we have here our PSA. How did I find all of these things? Um, and so really I found them through using hashtags. So a hashtag is a word or phrase preceded by the pound symbol. On social media, it serves as an indication that a piece of content is related or belongs to a specific topic or category. It helps make content discoverable on platform searches and um, it reaches more people looking for that content and it helps somebody find other people in a personal learning network, which I'm gonna talk about in a moment. But as a content creator, if you're creating content for a specific audience, you would use the hashtags, hashtags to make content more public for your audience. As a content consumer, you would wanna search for those specific hashtags. And so I list out a couple or a few examples here. Uh, for example, I'm a history teacher, so I would search the hashtag history teacher so I could find content created by history teachers, uh, whether on Facebook or Twitter or Instagram. A friend of mine conducts a Twitter chat um, once a week, every Wednesday at about 6 p.m. Pacific time, and it's called third chat. She teaches third grade. And so anytime the third chat hashtag is used, all of those posts related to third grade teachers and their contents or their information would um, show up. I'm also a world history teacher. So again, I would um, use the hashtag in my own content um, or in my own post as world history teacher, and I would use it to search. Some fun ones are IYKYK, which means if you know, you know. Um, so it's kind of 
like a, a play on finding different things that people just like. OOTD, which is outfit of the day. I love looking at different outfits posted. It gives me ideas on how to use what I have in my own closet. How it started, how it's going. Two kinds of people, which you saw earlier, and the Getty Museum Challenge, which is one I found last year as just as the COVID-19 pandemic started. And so we're going to take a look at some of this. We already saw two kinds of people, and we're going to see how it started, how it's going, and the Getty Museum Challenge. So using it for classroom examples, though. So, so far, I've been talking a lot about the teacher using social media. But now we want to kind of move away from that and having the students do things. And so classroom examples for using hashtags summarize today's learning in three hashtags or using hashtags in your questioning. Which historical figure can be described by the following hashtags? Burr shot first, young scrappy hungry, 51 essays. And if you're a Hamilton fan like I am, then you know that that would be Alexander Hamilton. You wanna take a look at your information that you wanna present and you want a content plan. So as a teacher, we are all lesson planners for sure, but we want to try and think about it as being now a content planner and moving from content planner to content creator and content facilitator. So how it started when teachers were teaching in the classroom, this was pretty much the norm, right? On the left side, we see the teacher at the front of the room writing on a chalkboard um, using maps and other visuals in the front that our teacher created, and um, students are sat in rows facing the front. But now we see how it's going, and now we see someone else is at the front of the room and facilitating the learning. Not necessarily the teacher, possibly the teacher. But you see that now we have a more collaborative setting using technology. We don't see a ton of books on the table. And instead, we see laptops, post-it notes, pens. And the group looks engaged in what is being taught. So again, how it started versus how it's going. Being a lesson planner, we're sequencing events. We are sequencing our lesson. We know that in the beginning, we're gonna do have a two now, then we're gonna do direct instruction, and then we're gonna do a think pair share and so forth. But we wanna think more in terms of content planning. And so what we are presenting to our students now gives a purpose. And then we can move into content creator which means now we are not just planning what we're giving our students, but how we give it to our students. The content caters to our audience. But then, now we wanna move into a content facilitator. Now, that's what I call it, because I wanna facilitate my students presenting the content. I wanna put it in their own hands. I wanna give them a voice. I want them to be the creators. Um, I want them to take ownership of their learning. And so I wanna encourage them to create. And so we saw earlier the Instagram PSA um, and I did that, I showed them examples and I showed them what a PSA is, I set parameters and I had them create a public service announcement on their own. They had different choices on how to do so, but making it an Instagram post made it really digestible for them. So this is a student example, what inspired the Abolish Ice movement. And you can even see that they used the hashtag and what are their overall goals. And so I took some of the slides or the, the post that my student created and I have it here. And they have why the backlash? And they even have different ways to represent the information for the PSA and some more information. 
And then they also leave with a call to action, which is what a PSA is meant to do. What do you think about the Abolish ICE movement? And so it made, it made making a public service announcement, which could seem really daunting for some students just due to the fact of the research that they have to conduct um, into something really digestible and really doable and really engaging for them. So I mentioned the Getty Museum Challenge hashtag earlier. The Getty Museum Challenge started as a way for artists to, um, to give, show their medium, but in a different way through social media. And so different people would take pieces of art and recreate them using everyday items at home. So I took that concept and with my seventh grade students um, in studying the Renaissance, and I literally waited one full year for my students to do this project. Um, I gave them the parameters, I gave them a compelling question to give them a writing piece to the project. And they were to recreate pieces of Renaissance art. So I gave them an example of myself. So I had to recreate a piece of Renaissance art. I used my dog in the, in the example. And we have some products here. So we have The Last Supper by Da Vinci. We have Gonzaga. And I love the fact that the student used their dog as well. We have Albert Durer. And now we have Twitter. So Twitter is also a social media platform. It's more text-based. And so we're gonna see how we can use Twitter in the classroom without actually using Twitter. So some examples of Twitter assignments. Create a Twitter thread for a fictional or historical figure. So for example, here you see a historian, Stanford historian Sam Weinberg, talking about um, posting on media and a three tweet thread about fishing. And so you can set parameters in that way too. Create a three tweet thread on whatever topic. Demonstrate today's learning in a single tweet. And again, 280 is the maximum. Create a Twitter conversation between two opposing views. Respond to a tweet or quote from an industry expert. And so for that, you could present the students with a quote from an industry expert or historian or even a fictional character, and they would respond with 280 characters. TikTok, TikTok is, I have no words for TikTok, honestly, because it's such an interesting medium. It's so visual. And there is actually so much that goes into making a TikTok video that we don't see behind, that we don't see as viewers of TikTok. So use TikTok soft videos to assess student learning. Some examples of TikTok style assignments, exit tickets. Choose a question to answer in the form of a TikTok. What did you learn in today's class? Uh, what are you struggling with to understand or how do you feel about today's classwork? Make a connection to, from today's learning to in today's class to learning from another class or concept, or even better, apply it to something in the real world. Love that because it's not, you don't want students necessarily just talking at the camera, but they should be doing a production. They should be using background music. They should be using stickers uh, so that they can point to different parts of the video um, and to give their audience a summary like we have here in the center of their learning. So again, they can use stickers, text, music, um, and they can try and act out or film events that would provide a more entertaining summary. They could even parody an event. For 
for example, in the history classroom or from the day's learning in a TikTok. Uh, they should consider how to play on themes, ideas, concepts, uh, parody a piece of work, uh, kind of like the Getty Museum Challenge, that's a parody, but in video form. And they can also consider to take key parts of a piece and sum it up into a small time frame. Remember, TikToks are 30 seconds. There's an abundance of resources for creation. Canva is my favorite because there are pre-made templates that are visually engaging on Canva uh, for social media, infographics, etc. Slides Mania is also a great resource for slides presentations, but they also have a YouTube channel template. So think of ways or, or things that students can curate for a YouTube channel on a particular topic. And it doesn't need to be videos, but maybe images or maybe subtopics. Wakelet is another place to curate and collaborate. Students can sign up for free and it does meet um, the guidelines of, of social media for children. Class Tools is a website that has a fake template for a Facebook page that you can use for important people. Slides Go is my go-to for slides templates, but they also have social media sli uh, style slides templates. And Ditch That Textbook has templates for Pinterest, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. So that's kind of an all-in-one where you don't have to recreate the wheel or you don't have to recreate um, resources for your students and you can use all of these or some of these to present to your students in using social media in the classroom. So thank you for viewing. Again, I'm Erica Aguirre. You can find me at EdTech and Style on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. The presentation and resources can be found on the website you see on the screen. And I want to give a big shout out to all of my friends out there, my TF4L. Love you guys. And I will see you soon. Be excellent to each other and have a great rest of your summer.